Red Horse was born in 1822 in Nebraska, USA, a Native American from the Miniconjou Sioux tribe in Northern America, a native, chief, husband, father, artist, and a warrior. There is not a lot of information about the Lakawa chief, but of the events in which he lived through and illustrated in his drawings. After all, actions speak louder than words. Red Horse fought and won in one of the worst U.S. Army defeats ever, the Battle of Little Bighorn, a.k.a. Cluster's Last Stand, on June 25, 1876. Giving context to the battle, many years before, the Treaty of Fort Larmine was negotiated and agreed by the U.S. and the Sioux in 1868. This treaty ensured the peace between both populations and granted the Black Hills to the natives. But before the greedy nation that once was the massive expansion towards the West made the white man hungry. The manifest destiny was widely regarded as a calling for the settlers to expand towards the Pacific. But on their way to fulfill their economic desires, the natives of the West were told to move to make way for the settlers. In other words, each and every native tribe were confronted by the U.S. forces and forced to move onto reservation. Many following the Trail of Tears, a deadly path that was thousands of miles away from their homeland. Let's just say the natives were not exactly happy campers about that. The battle took place near the Indian camp and the infamous Little Bighorn River in what now is southern Montana. Red Horse fought alongside the combined forces of the Sioux, Cheyenne, and Apparel tribes under the command of Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse, whom has a monument in which is in the process of being made today against the 7th Cavalry Unit of the U.S. Army, led by George, George Armstrong Custer. However, when Lieutenant George Armstrong Custer and his men found the massive village of the Cabine tribe, they were in for a battle like no other. Overwhelmed by the number of Indians, Custer and his forces were surrounded almost instantly, before he could even call for backup. There were no survivors in the battle from the 7th Cavalry Unit. Red Horse him, himself recalls that some surrendered but were killed because they only took women and children, so the remaining soldiers were killed off. Red Horse documented the battle with 41 pictographs using graphite, color pencils, and ink on fine paper. However, many drawings went untitled. This specific one is one of 41 pictographic drawings of the Battle of Little Bighorn from Red Horse. The drawing is from the viewpoint of a Native American. There are, in a sense, three rows. The top two rows contain both men portrayed in blue and other men portrayed with headdresses or war bonnets. All figures are on horseback while engaging each other with weapons like spears, bows, swords, pistols, and rifles. Red Horse depicts a very cramped fight as all the people are together in one giant clash, several figures striking each other with their weapons. The last roll shows several dead and decapitated bodies, all from the men whom are wearing blue. Red Horse includes headless bodies, men bleeding, lost legs and arms, and fallen American flags. Some formal elements in the drawing include various organic and contour lines in the horses and jagged lines in the flag. Red Horse also uses organic shapes using both thin and strong lines. As for the color in the artwork, Red Horse uses many colors both primary and secondary, includes different shades and tints, for example in the horses. He has different shades for red and different shades for blue. These colors can be considered to be chromatic. As for the principles of design, you can assume that the balance is asymmetrical because of the constant pattern of horses. Red Horse puts emphasis on the use of red to represent blood because it is so much darker than the other tones of red in the drawing. The Lakuta subchief Red Horse was the one that drew this one and the other 40 pictographics of the battle although many of the pieces still remain untitled. The target audience isn't to a certain person or group, 
and said it is more of an informative piece for anyone looking for the native's perspective of the battle. Assuming the title is the Battle of Little Bighorn, the piece represents the battle, U.S. soldiers, natives, and America. This piece was made in 1881, although the battle took place in 1876. This piece also was made in a reservation in South Dakota, which suggests the idea that after the battle, things didn't really work out for Red Horse and other natives. Red Horse created these drawings to get a first-hand look at the battle, making sure his account was seen and, and to be studied later on. Months after the historic battle, the U.S. sends more forces to fight off the remaining natives, leading Sitting Bull to flee to Canada and Crazy Horse to surrender, forcing Red Horse then to move to a reservation in South Dakota. 41 drawings are indeed a lot from only one person, but it is safe to assume that Red Horse's intentions were clear to craft as many drawings as possible to get the native perspective of the battle. This particular Peculiar drawing sums up the battle. The iconology in the drawing is very clear as it should be. Red Horse makes it clear to distinguish the natives and members of the 7th Cavalry. The bottom row makes it clear that the casualties of the army was much more greater than those of the Indians. The artist does not shy away from showing the mutilated and wounded bodies. What probably is the most important to take away from the bottom row is the fallen American flag. Even in the center of the drawing, you see a soldier with an inverted flag. This is, to many, a disrespectful gesture. Red Horse is showing his rebel side through his pen and ink. Using both inverted and the fallen flag can represent many things, such as the embarrassing defeat of the army and the native rebellion. Wandering in eyes, you can also see that not one Native American is wounded or killed. This only shows the dominance that the natives had over their attackers. The natives portrayed are made to look powerful and fearless. Red Horse really wanted to express his passion and love for his native culture. The piece is filled with mixed emotions and conflicting viewpoints. The drawing is almost a fat middle finger to, to the American invaders and to the stories that glorify the heroism that was Custer. In other non- Native American works, you see Custer as the hero of the last stand, leading his quote-unquote great army to battle the savage natives. Some history outlets view his fame about the battle as a spectacular defeat, which is odd to say the least. The median of the drawing helps me understand the vibrant and detailed characteristics of the battle. The strong red representing to blood does not shine away from the brutality of war. War is nothing like it is depicted in the media. It is much more dark and serious. Like General George C. Marshall wrote, Once an army is involved in war, there is a beast in every fighting man which begins tugging at its chains, and a good officer must learn early on how to keep the beast under control both in his men and himself. The painting made me realize that there is no good guy in war, even if your intentions are good. There are no heroes. The lines and scale help, me, help make the artwork more realistic and believable. Nothing is abstracted, making it more trustworthy. The artwork supports the idea of the brutality of war and the dominance the natives showed. Red Horse even said that the Sioux took only women and children as prisoners, later on saying that we did not take a single soldier but killed all of them. This specific turn of events is harsh even for them. This artwork is a constant reminder of war and hatred between nations that are of the opposite. Many, the many drawings are good to keep and learn from, as they came from a very trustworthy man, I assume. Red Horse had no reason to exaggerate his depiction, for there is no quote-unquote whitewashing that could have been for that could have forged a different perspective, since not a soul of the Seventh Cavalry has survived the battle to tell a story. My artwork is titled Tactical Blooms and it is a drawing using pencil and color pencils. It is, in a sense, a rifle that contains a flower bursting out of it. I did this by sketching it out many times on another sheet of paper and then coming out with the final product later on. I did this 
because it is a stance of the idea of war and how it's the worst thing we can do to each other. This is heavily based on Red Horse's idea that war brings out the worst of each of us and it does not improve anything at all. Since roses and flowers have a connotation with love, it coming out of the barrel instead of a bullet speaks volumes about peace and love, something rare on the battlefield. As much as it is fun to shoot guns and think of yourself as a badass, it's important to keep our beasts in a cage and throw the key away.